I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of ISHR. Mr. President, thank you for your strong denunciation yesterday of intimidation and reprisals against civil society actors engaging with this council. An online threat by a state representative, albeit one hiding behind the cowardice of anonymity, is a threat against both the targeted individual, Florian Erminger, and the integrity of this important institution. Consistent with your role and responsibility as Council President, we look forward to your follow-up on this case. We also encourage the Russian delegation to publicly report to the Council on the steps taken to ensure accountability for the perpetrator, justice for the victim and to guarantee non-repetition. We share many of the concerns in the High Commissioner's alarming statement. It is incumbent on this Council and Member States to respond. We share his concern as to restrictions and attacks against civil society actors in council member states including China, Russia and Venezuela, together with allegations of acts of intimidation and reprisal. On the occasion of the council's 10th anniversary and in the presence of all 193 UN member states, we ask, is such conduct compatible with council membership? We urge UN member states to put human rights principles above perceived political interests in forthcoming council elections. We also share the High Commissioner's acute concern at the arbitrary detention of human rights defenders in states including Azerbaijan, Bahrain and Egypt. We find it difficult, however, to welcome the release of, def of defenders who should never have been detained. States should be applauded when they provide victims with effective remedy and full reparation, not when they take incomplete, ad hoc steps to end systematic violations of international law. Finally, like the High Commissioner, we are concerned with continued attacks against LGBT persons and activists from Bangladesh to Orlando. The incidents of violence and discrimination on the grounds of sexual orientation and gender identity in all corners of the world, perpetrated by both state and non-state actors, demands a strong, systematised institutional response. Member states who promote universal rights should back this up with strong support for an independent expert on human rights and SOGI at this session. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much.